Rush hour in Nairobi. And for most Kenyans, matatus are always the better option. Not just because they are cost effective, but convenient in a country known for its notorious traffic. But more than just a means of transport, they are a culture symbol. Phenomenal artwork that conveys messages in most creative ways. The interior is just as catchy. Big screens, loudspeakers, and even internet connectivity, free Wi-Fi. Building a matatu is very important and it's a must in this industry. The more you build this matatu, the more you get more customers. They are example of the youths. The youths love these matatus and they pay more. So in a day, we make a lot of money if your if your matatu is pimped more. Their clients couldn't agree more. First, because they are very fast. Uh, second, they overlap. You don't uh, sit in the jam. And because of the music, you just uh, you listen to their music and you relax. I prefer to enter this matatu because the graffiti makes me look even cool when I when I enter this matatu. I'm cool, you see. But behind this great artistry is a multi-million industry driven by young creative designers. Kevin Mushiri, a.k.a. Kev's Auto, is one of the kingpins. He's been in the industry for the last five years. It depends with the customer and the client. Uh, maybe one of the clients will come with a hip-hop theme, another one will come with a gospel theme, another one will come with a football theme. It's a complex system that also does not come cheap. One matatu could take up to two months. To get a complete product like this one, the owner would have to part with a cool 10,000 US dollars. For example, for a month I can do three vehicles, of which I, I, I make good money out of it. Basically, around 150 to 200, it depends on the customer. Kevin makes approximately 1,500 to 2,000 US dollars a month. Not bad in a country with high unemployment rate. Ricky Choda is the man behind this workshop. Okay, basically we, we employ about 200 people. That is uh, in the building, the seats department, cushion department, windows, framework. But this multi-million industry is currently under threat as the country's transport regulators embark on a crackdown on the matatus. They say they are a safety hazard on Kenyan roads. You find that operators have gone ahead to do what we call innovative decorations. Some of them have even done it to the level of you can't know these cars which make, for example. Uh, some of the cars have um, a lot of loud music inside, the lighting inside, you can't even see who is inside there, and these kind of things. I hear some of the things, if you look at that, they distract even the driver, they distract everybody. And uh, there are some of the causes that are leading to the accidents on our roads. There have also been complaints that some of the artwork is obscene, bordering on pornography. The crackdown has been ongoing for five days now, and most matatus remain grounded. Some of them have begun removing the artwork, while others remain adamant. As the country's transport regulators embark on a crackdown on these heavily pimped matatus in a bid to bring safety and sanity to the industry, many behind this matatu culture are calling for a balance to ensure that while there is safety on the roads, this operation does not interfere with this creative industry that has gone a long way to nurture talent and provide much needed employment to the Kenyan youth. It's my business and I don't do obscene legal things on a vehicle. So I don't know why they are coming in, telling us to strip, while we are trying our best to keep the culture going on. But so far, the National Transport and Safety Authority has shown no sign of backing down. And with this, at least 500,000 jobs are at stake. Susan Mungeli, CCTV, in Nairobi, Kenya.